Hey folks, so this week I'm going to be tackling a title that did give me a bit of trouble to write, as it took me a bit of time to get far enough in it that I felt comfortable talking about it. Specifically, I'm going to be chattering about Redlock Studios' Souls-like flavored platforming adventure, Shattered, Tale of the Forgotten King. Still, did I come out of this feeling Redlock's first title was a crowning achievement? or was Shattered ultimately a broken experience? I'm your host, Arlian. Let's find out together. This story begins like so many others, as you find yourself in the shoes of a voiceless protagonist. Though, less for self-insert reasons and more that he's literally mute, which occasionally winds up with you getting hassled for your conversation skills. This also makes it awfully hard to get to the bottom of the terrible events that have ravaged the once illustrious civilization of the Astir. Their cyclopean cities now reduced to desolate husks replete with mindless entities. The only clue you have to start with is the mysterious skeletal creature known as Yak, who serves as your guide. But will that be enough, or is the world of Hypnos doomed to inevitable disintegration? Honestly, this might be a bit heavy as far as summaries go, but it's not inaccurate. Whether you're poring over ancient logs, or listening to the tales of Shatter's handful of NPCs, the picture it paints is exceptionally bleak, and that's when it's not being intentionally obtuse. After all, whilst you're provided information, there's definitely times where characters are showcased as unreliable, whether it due to atrophied memories, general uncertainty, personal bias, or even malicious deception. Frankly, between that and the overall solid writing and world building, I found my hunger for deep lore stoked, to the point where I was going out of my way to seek out every story encounter and side quest in the hopes that they'd offer a greater sense of clarity about what had happened in the game. It's legitimately that solid. That said, hunting down some of these elements can be a bit of a doozy. Take the Memrims, for example. These often well-hidden obelisks serve as major lore dumps that you can archive and read, and even provide some limited extra dialogue options if you find the right ones before encountering an NPC. That said, not only do you need to find these, you also need to find a secondary collectible in the form of Ebon Fragments. What's more, if you do decide to pursue the deeper story, that also means you have to ignore the fact that Yawk allows you to use those Ebon Fragments as a means of leveling yourself up at a one-for-one -one basis. Oof. And given that Shattered lacks an NG+, but has five friggin' endings to go over, there's definitely an appeal to doing just that if I replay again, both to save time and to savage certain bosses, because a few of them have more than earned a grudge match. Though, I guess that's par for the course since, like I said in the intro, Shattered's a Souls-like. Frankly, the staples are all there. Stamina-based combat, proxies for bonfires and Estus flasks, and yes, the time-honored tradition of your precious, precious stand-in for experience, essence in this case, it's bled out into your murderer, requiring you to hit them to make them spit out parts of what they've stolen from you. Unless you make the mistake of killing them at the same time they kill you. Then you can just kiss all of your essence goodbye. And this can wind up being a bit painful, given there's actually only one location where you can spend that essence. That's right, while you come across save shrines, they don't actually give you the option of spending your experience. In fact, the only location where you can spend this essence is in the beginning hub, which will necessitate you returning to that location repeatedly. Thankfully, the game does grant you an item that allows you to return to that point with limitless uses alongside another item that returns you to the last save point you used. That said, it's still a little bit of busy work, and I hated having to see those loading screens constantly. That's not my only nitpick either, given Shattered doesn't really provide an intuitive UI, and this matters a fair bit when you're actually spending experience. Like, my word, I was looking at the stat screen and was at a loss for trying to figure out how strong I actually was or how much damage I was going to do with a given weapon or spell. It's really difficult to gauge since you can only see a baseline of how strong you are that is unmodified by whatever you're using, so I wound up 
making the mistake of playing over half the game as a mage, which was painful for a number of reasons, such as the fact that magic sucks. Uh, there's a limited repertoire of spells made even worse by the fact that the pre-patched cross slash, which is what I was using, used to whiff on enemies and do no damage. It's been fixed now, but even then, just don't make my mistake. The game is just a lot more enjoyable and relaxed when you're swinging a big hunk of metal in people's faces until they stop moving. It is so much nicer. Though, not gonna lie, that's also about as nuanced as combat gets. I mean, yes, there's the finesse involved in pairing an enemy and, and setting up like a vicious coup de grace in return, but when it comes down to melee, the difference between the weapons mostly boils down to, do I want to be ponderously slow and hit like a train or a speedy boy? Literally, given that while there are a few slight differences in the various weapons combos, the crux of their animations are actually shared, and it makes combat feel very samey. This is actually most notable when you see their heavy attacks. Oh, and when it comes to weapon upgrading, well, you're limited on that in a few ways. So first off, you actually need to find the items necessary to unlock the forge, which is what you use to upgrade your items as well as to craft consumable items like healing items or buff items. You also need to find the items needed to upgrade the forge so you can actually get your items up to higher upgrade levels. That said, those items needed to even upgrade your weapons? Even the most basic forms of these items are limited to the hilariously painful degree that when I managed to find the 30 collectible memory fragments in the game that are very secret and help you unlock the best sword in the game that's unique for actually being fast and hard hitting, I couldn't fucking upgrade it. I couldn't fucking upgrade it even once because I didn't have the ability to find any more base upgrade items. I didn't have the ability to buy them from a shop. They just weren't fucking there. I scoured all over the place. Nothing. That sound you're hearing right now is just such an intense fucking frustration. I mean, at least the other side quests gave me neat lore and heaps of hearts of essence consumables. Just... Anyways, as much as this is enough to make Shattered a bit of an odd duck, it doesn't actually stop there either. After all, Shattered isn't just a Souls-like, it also happens to feel very akin to a platforming slash adventure title. That's right, all those atmospheric levels you're roaming through, positively rife with gaps and traps you'll be jumping and dashing between, whether in search of secrets or just to avoid plummeting to your untimely and inevitable doom. What's more, it even forces some of these into rather specific camera angles, essentially evoking the style of a 2D platformer. Sorta of cute, but really not helpful sometimes. I'll admit, I'm thanking my lucky stars that the game at least had the decency to allow me to keep my essence when I invariably face-planted into the depths of the abyss or died to other environmental hazards. Big yay! L seriously, because... I died to falling a lot. I And I don't think I would have been half as adventurous otherwise given there's some serious jank when it comes to making your way through areas and platforming in the you can totally climb up things you shouldn't necessarily be able to and then either fall through the world to your death because something wasn't quite as solid as it looked or you know you just straight up die because you hit an invisible barrier that kills you when you hit it. Which is weird, since there's also non-lethal invisible walls in other areas. I just... I don't get it. And yet, more often than not, it actually still felt rewarding to explore. Again, probably because I wasn't actually losing anything but a little bit of time. And, and doing this kind of stupidity? Well, sometimes that weird nook on top of a church really did have a neat rare item to find, or potentially that weird series of ledges I vaulted up offered a means of bypassing enemy ambush, or led to a secret passageway that in turn led to lore, or to sequence break the area I was in. It's 
charming in like a quirky way even more so when i realized that falling damage doesn't exist if you attack in the air which meant you can just ski down a mountainside on your sword if it is a sharp enough incline that said shatter's fondness for verticality and platforming in its design isn't the only reason i think it harkens to an adventure game it also offers a fairly large open world for players to explore in the form of the ancient lands and it really does feel vast. Unfortunately, it also feels a bit sparse. That's not to say there isn't things to do on it, but I'm going to wholly admit that I loathe the time I spent on the world map. Poring over that large, desolate space in search of secrets often felt akin to wandering through a barren wilderness, which I guess was the point. I mean, it does gradually get better, given that you progressively unlock a fast travel network as well as some teleportation gates that'll take you to key areas. But even then, I've still found myself most fond of the tighter-knit areas as they eschewed the busy work of just traveling. Also, I hated the hoverboard. Yes, it's a tool you're granted early on in order to traverse the ancient lands a lot faster. And yes, it does technically do that job functionally well, but it also sounds like you're riding a vacuum cleaner the entire time you are on that goddamn thing. And if you hit the turbo button to move faster, it gets a hell of a lot worse. And what's more, it just handles like you're riding a vacuum on an ice rink. It is slidey as hell and has just this habit of not breaking correctly, which can end just you going right off a fucking cliff to your death. And, and the side note, by the way, this is especially important since the game has the gall to provide you a hoverboard racetrack slash obstacle course complete with deadfalls as one of the only two ways to advance to the game. And I was stuck using that to actually make progress until I found the key for the other way forward many, many hours later. But I guess this is about a time that I should go cry or fuss about something else, you know, since it's not just gameplay elements that I have mixed feelings on. For instance, there's the visuals, and that's not to say I'm knocking the graphics, it looks good enough to me, honestly. That said, whilst it certainly carries a distinct aesthetic, there's some really notable things that offset that. Like the way you'll become incredibly familiar with certain enemy designs and attack animations to the point that a number of bosses and enemies begin to just blur together. Like, there are interesting character and boss designs to encounter, don't get me wrong, but there's a whole set of these guys that are essentially cookie cutters of each other, and I fucking hated it. And, and then there's the elements of the area design. Seriously, it's agony to walk into a pure white area that's bloomed out so hard that your retinas feel as though they're trying to retract into the depth of your eye sockets. While it doesn't make up the entirety of the game, it's not exactly an isolated incident either, which meant that I began to sigh in relief whenever I happened to an area with a much gloomier look to it. Oh, and then there's also the bits I'd already mentioned, like where you go to leap onto something that looks solid before just clipping through the texture and falling into the void. But far be it from me to just rehash things there. Like I mentioned earlier, the game has moments where it takes control of the camera and pretends it's a side-scroller. That said, this can backfire in a few ways because, one, it wrenching the camera over managed to make me not only feel nauseous, it changed the actual trajectory of my jumps, which led to my deaths a few times when I wasn't seeing it coming. It also made things really fucking hectic when this happened during combat sections which were happening right along where the screen was just swapping back and forth between two angles. Hated this. Hated this so, so intensely. And there's actually ways that you can break the camera. Like teleporting out of one of these segments actually caused my screen to lock this way and that was obnoxious. So yeah, you know, just a little bit of cancer. Comparatively, the little minor instances of clipping some of the weapon models was a complete non-issue, as was the soundtrack, though I do stress non-issue given I was mostly neutral to it. Maybe that's because I spent the vast portion of my time in Composers Don't Sue Me slash streamer mode, but the game's sound design is mostly it, though I do have to admit that the few themes that accompany the endgame segments help to set the mood nicely. Anyways, that's... That's a lot, I'll admit, so we're just going to try and boil this down for the conclusion, and ultimately, 
What I'm trying to say here is that Shattered is a fun but flawed experience. There were certain times where I was enjoying myself as I made my way through the game, but I'll be the first to admit that I also found myself put off by the combat as I continued forward to the game, and the overall feeling of sameness that accompanied much of the experience. To the point that I can't even properly describe the immense feeling of relief I had when the final three bosses were so incredibly distinct from everything else that preceded them, and the platforming? Again, definitely a mixed bag, given the weirdness involving areas you shouldn't be, and the invisible death walls, in tandem with how vexing can be to get to areas you're supposed to explore. It's just really weird at the end of the day, since it felt like the game was trying to motivate me to check around things and explore, given my mobility options, and, and being able to air dash, and climb up these awkward ledges, and sometimes finding things, but more often than not, just getting punished. Frankly, the, the one thing I can't gripe about in this game is its narrative. I genuinely wanted to know so much more, to the point that I sometimes felt the itch to go and do a second playthrough, which was then tempered by the realization that I have to do it from scratch, so instead I just went to the trouble of copying my save file near the end of the game so I could see three of the game's five central endings. I'd have done it for the other two, but I locked myself out of that opportunity hours prior. Big, big whoops. All the same, I do hope that there is a sequel to this game. I, I hope that one emerges, by and large, just so I can see more about how the narrative will unfold, which is probably why I came away feeling that despite all its flaws and foibles, Shattered wasn't a fail. It's, it, it is rough around the edges, I am the first one to say that, and yet I still left with a certain sense of fondness for the narrative it wanted to tell. Ultimately, I'd rate Shattered Tale of the Forgotten King a fumble. There is definitely something there if you're a major fan of peculiar stories and don't mind a clunky take at an action platforming Souls-like, but I can also definitely understand if it's not for everyone. And also, by this same token, I am sincerely hoping that if a sequel or follow-up game does occur, that the developers eschew the Ancient Lands and aim also for something more story-dense in format, since that was by and large the game's biggest strength in my books. Anywho, anywho, thanks for tuning in! If you agree, disagree, or just have something to say to me, feel free to comment. I always love to hear just what you folks actually think of my opinions, and if you have any games you think I should check out. Also, if you have an interest in supporting my efforts to create new indie reviews, interviews with the developers, and just gaming content large, you can hit the subscribe button and the bell so you know there's a new release. There's also a Discord, links in the description, so you can become part of our community, the Crit Hit Cauldron. That said, I'll catch you folks either on the next episode of Crit Hit or over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Arlian. Take care till then, folks.